I'm excited to introduce our guest today on Hayes' Hard Drive. He's a songwriter, artist, player, and producer. His song, Hank Williams' Ghost, won the AMA Song of the Year, and he's also won the NSAI and ASCAP Songwriter of the Year. Welcome to the show, one of the most well-respected musicians in the business, Daryl Scott. Welcome, Daryl. Hello, hello. So USA Today praised you and said brilliantly clever songs. Rolling Stones listed the 2003 CD uh, Theater of the Unheard in their list of critics' top albums and compared you to Clark Springsteen at their best. Performing songwriter went all the way and said, hey, you're the best of the best. You seemingly have an innate ability to to craft a song that relates to people, I would say, like on a on a roots level. Is this something that you've had to practice? Does it come naturally? How do you do it? Well, I've been writing a long time uh, since I was 12. Uh, that's the writing part. And then uh, the playing part, I've been playing since I was six because I grew up in a family band and it was as natural to play music as for some folks to uh, go play baseball or golf or fish uh, that they do a lot uh, with the family and, and, and understand how something like that works uh, and repeat it over and over. So I, I've been doing that since I was a kid, but as far as getting um, the, I don't know, the better songs that I was always looking for, I really didn't find my first uh, song that I, I felt, finally had arrived since I was uh, until I was about 28 so uh, I just have written a lot is what's happened and uh, uh, and just uh, kind of have uh, had stayed with it I know uh, I know you mentioned your brothers I, I believe you have five brothers and all of them are very well to do musically. I know you're doing some uh, shows with them coming up pretty soon, which is is unheard of. You, you guys don't get a chance to do that very often. Yeah, it. You know, it. Um, sometimes there's five or ten years between us playing together. You know, uh, but I really work at um, every once in a while, maybe every year or two, uh, trying to get a gig or two together uh really there's a family reunion that happens in kentucky and um it's been going on in in the the the, this part of kentucky and our family for over 100 years uh called the june meeting and uh so really I, i try to base it around that um and really a way to get them to come out here uh for the june meeting but also to play uh and it is a rare event and that's what i mean i grew up with uh it was uh, four brothers. There's five of us in total. And uh, we all played different instruments. So we made a, f- a full band of bass drums and keyboards and guitars. And we all sing uh, and can switch parts and do whatever feels like needs to be done. And we just kind of grew up doing that. And that's sort of the kind of comes natural uh, as well as having done it a lot. I'm sure it's both I, of those things. I'm sure it's fun to be on stage and kind of look over at, at your brothers and you know, you guys probably have the ability to to read one another very easily as you're on stage. I'm sure that's that's a lot of fun, not only for you guys, but for the audience as well. Yeah, it happens so rarely that uh for us to get together and play, which we're doing this weekend, is just almost unheard of. Um and um so it makes it a a special event and um and it's a it's a rare thing that happens and um we get to eat a lot because that's what we also do and cook and uh go to to the june meeting which is grave decorating memorial uh time really and so uh, that's what's that's what's happening this very weekend and that's really where i learned to play music was uh, with my brothers you know, many, many musicians have covered your songs, and I'm just, mm-hmm. if you don't mind, I'm just going to name drop uh, just a few. Uh, Keb Moe, Faith Hill, Daryl Worley, Sam Bush, Guy Clark, Brad Paisley, Alan Jackson, Travis Tritt, the Dixie J- Chicks, just just to name a few. Um, do, yeah. do you feel to have an 
and another musician to cover one of your songs is the ultimate form of respect musically? Yeah, uh, I do. Uh, and especially the songwriter ones, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, Guy Clark, well, that's a song we wrote together. Steve Earle on his uh, latest album is one that, um, that he's recorded and, uh, Keb Moe and such. Uh, so especially the writers, but, but, um, uh, not only the writers, also great singers, uh, to choose a song of mine, you know, it's, I, uh, it's great. Um, and I always learn something out of hearing somebody else sing my song is in, instead of me singing it. I always, they're all in my head, sort of locked in as songs of mine. Uh, but I always learn something from hearing somebody else do my song. I know this may be a very odd question, and it is a personal question of mine. I swore if I ever had the opportunity to speak with you, I'd ask. Uh -huh. um, I know most people are familiar with your song, It's a Great Day to Be Alive. And yeah. toward the end of the song, there's kind of a wolf howl that you do. Yeah. And and I know the, the artist, much like a painter, um, when you write a song, you have your own reasons possibly for doing that, or maybe it just comes. But then the person who is listening or, or looking at the, the artist's work makes them think of something. And every time I hear that, I often wonder, were you possibly giving a nod to Warren Zavon and the song Werewolves of London? I, I've, I've often thought that and always wanted to ask you that question. You know, I loved uh, Warren Zavon records, his writing, his attitude, his uh, sound and all that. Uh, and I'm aware of that, that howl that he does. But uh, it really came from, uh, oh, uh, at the time I wrote that, I had little little kids. They're now in their 20s. I had little kids, and, and I, for some reason, uh, I would make that howl sound, you know, many, multiple times per day. It was almost a habit of mine, you know, to uh, go, ah, or something <laughs> like that while playing with the kids. Um, and... Uh, that just showed up in the song because uh, I, you know, had been doing it with the kids many, many t times per day. And it's one of those habits I couldn't get out of uh, sound wise. I, I make a lot of noises um, and uh, that uh, are almost mindless. Uh, but then I, you know, realize I'm doing those sounds. And sometimes uh, like that one showed up in a song Um so that's really where it came from is is um, some of the noises I made back at that time when I had six year olds and eight year olds and and just playful. And uh, it showed up in the song because it seemed like a good good spot for it, for the howling at the moon. And I'd been making that noise for a few years. So that's that's really where it came from, uh, from my point of view. But I am aware of the Warren Zevon um, tune and his songs. He's great. Yeah, I. I always enjoy talking with, with the songwriters and especially as one as accomplished as yourself, just to, you know, th this is what, what I'm, what I'm hearing. What was it that you meant? And I, I always enjoy that. That just warms my heart. I have a five-year-old and, um, I can, I am definitely in your shoes. I, I do some things sometimes, yeah. <laughs> you know, with my son. That's right. And we're the doing noises or things we say yeah. or ways we walk or talk. I mean, just being playful with our kids. That's where that came from is that was one of those things. Um, you know, there were other lines in that same song. Uh, Red bird, red bird. What do you see is uh, uh, from a children's book uh, by Eric, Eric Carl, uh, a children's writer. And I'd been, that was my f kid's favorite book for a while, you know. Um, so all that kind of stuff, pl even play comes in to influence my songs, you know. Uh, anything that I'm kind of, whatever's going on has some kind of influence on me. Um, uh, and that's the only way I can, ex I can explain it. And I, uh, I'm just paying attention to even silly stuff uh, like playing with my kids and sounds that are made or or books that we read together or something like that back in the day.
Well, I know that for for myself, it will it will give me a, a new perspective as I as I listen to that song. And and I will say this: one that I listen to quite frequently when I'm not having the best of days. It is an probably for me probably the most uplifting song that that I know of. It always brings oh, a smile great. to my face and uh, kind of kind of turns the clouds into some sunshine on one of those dreary days. Uh, yeah, I think it's one of those songs. I I hear that a lot from folks, and um, I'm I'm really happy that that uh, people feel you know have a connection to that song, and uh, you know because things can get real heavy in our lives or with the news or what's going on in the world, and sometimes just to have something uh, a way to kind of step aside from all that stuff and realize there's uh, there's you know, just fun or silliness and uh, good stuff going on as well. Um, and I appreciate that folks, you know, that song still speaks to folks for sure. And, and, you know, I find it with, with the, with some of your music, how that, how it's been used. I know, um, you know, Brad Paisley among other people have um, covered the song, never leave Harlan alive. And that yeah. was, that was also, the the really cool thing is before um, I have had I had a chance to interview the group Gangsta Grass who did the opening song to the show Justified and we talked about that and you know have the chance to interview you who actually has the song that has ended many of the seasons and there's multiple different recordings by different people and you also had the opportunity to have your version on there just amazing that the town and everything it, it seemingly they took that song and you know named the town harlan and i've actually watched the entire series and um that is a very powerful song to end those seasons it's very dramatic and well placed and that song is yeah. oh, it's just a home run yeah i'm very pleased with that see those things have nothing to do with me uh, much like having, you know, somebody famous record a song. I write the song for sure, for certain, but what happens after a song is written is kind of out of my hands. Uh, so I feel that songs have a life of their own and, you know, whether that means uh, it shows up on a TV show or on people's records or no one does, ever does anything with them or, and I just put them on my records or people sing them. You know, uh, around a campfire, all of that's good uh, stuff to me. Is is music? Um, you know, has a life of its own, and songs have a life of their own. And I have no idea how a, you know a song can get on and be so important for you know a television show like that. But on the other hand, it was a perfect song for that placement. And uh, you know, those are uh, things I still I don't understand how those things happen. Um, but, uh, I do, I, you know, I'm, I'm writing the songs, but I'm, I'm not doing that other part that follows it, uh, that that's other folks, uh, and, and songs, uh, just having their little magical way of getting around to people. I personally had the opportunity to see you here in Raleigh with Zach mm -hmm. Brown back in 2017. And I had often told people this story of you opening for Zach and there was something that occurred that I had never seen um, in any concert event that basically the main act, all of the guys, including Zach, would come out during your set and basically they would be playing with you and singing your music and it was like that campfire atmosphere that you had just mentioned yeah, it it was. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I thoroughly enjoyed that portion of the show almost as much as I did, you know, the the other portions. And and you also came on and you played with the band as well. It was just, I think the the whole thing. It almost seemed like just one piece instead of an opening act and then another act to follow. What what was it it like being out on tour, you know, in in that type of atmosphere with, with those guys. Oh, it was great, and that was Zach's uh, idea to do that. Uh, he wanted definitely me to, you know, open the shows, uh, but he wanted he wanted himself and his band uh, to kind of uh, come in on stage to do that. Uh, 
and that was totally his idea and that's what we did and uh, I traveled with them for two years and um, and then he the other part he wanted was for me to stay on stage and then play in his band which you know I loved doing because I'm a player as well so um, I was part of the band there for uh, for two years we had a great time with it it was uh, fantastic and uh, I think especially Zach's audience, you know, knows that, uh, you know, he's going to try to give them the best show that he can get his hands on. And for those two years, that was his idea of how to do that. When I, when I opened the show and I, I introduced you and I welcomed you, I, I just want to clarify that I said one of the most well-respected musicians in the business. And, and by telling that little story, I think that, displays that not only do people cover your music but you know that isn't a common thing for the the main act to come out and you know play with the opening act and I just it just once again reinforces how well respected you are in in the music community and um I mean yeah you know how thank you and again that's another example of things that I have no control of that I know how you know I know it's odd that the main act would come out and support the uh, the opening act, but that's again that's out of my hands. I, I I'm not the one who made that up. Uh, that has a has some kind of life or energy of its own outside of of, of me. You know. That's right. Um, yeah, I'm I'm always looking at that kind of stuff of uh, how in the world does this happen? You know, this is so out of the ordinary. Um, I've been very fortunate in that way uh, through music. Just a true testament to to you as a person, I, I think. You know, what kind of gracious person and, and humble person you are, um, you know, concerning your music and, and just who you are with just a, a great respect that you have. And uh, I, I am well, very thank you, I'm, man. Thank I'm, you. I'm very excited about Thursday, June the 6th. Um, a great venue in Blue Note Grill. Um, they have a lot of great artists that, that come through there. It's going to be in Durham. And I, w- I wanted to ask, is this going to be an acoustic set? Is it going to be a full band? Is it going to be, you know, a, a couple of guys? What's going to be the, uh, the, the, the lineup for that? It's going to be just me, uh, but I'm bringing a sound man out there with me on that run. And as a matter of fact, that starts off three weeks of uh, touring that we have North Carolina, Virginia, Ohio, Illinois, uh, Maryland, and stuff. And uh, so that that night is actually the first night of the of the tour, and it'll just be me on stage. I'll be bringing an acoustic uh, instrument or two, and I'm also going to be bringing an electric um, guitar and amp and stuff like that for that run. Um, and then uh, I also travel with my wife. And uh, I've kind of finally learned that that's the way to do this. If, if for us, if we're going to travel, um, you know, we're going to be together as opposed to uh, she's at home and I'm in some hotel somewhere, you know, multiple, many nights per year. That just doesn't make sense to me at this age. Um, uh, and so we travel together, my wife and I, and on that one, we're going to have a sound man as well. So the sound will be extra good and extra focused and, and all that. So that's what we're doing. And, and the Durham night uh, just starts all that whole tour off. That'll be our first night. And you're going to have openers that night. Rebecca Newton and David Burney will be opening for you, but then you're going to be traveling out to Asheville on the seventh, just in case some of the folks can't get to Durham. The yeah. June the June the seventh at the Orange Pill, great venue there, a great area in the downtown Asheville area. Then traveling over to Charlotte at the Neighborhood Theater, and then June the ninth, the Harvester Performance Center. So you're going to be here in in North Carolina uh, for for a little bit. And so if if you can't you know get to see Daryl at the Blue Note Grill, please take the opportunity to, uh, to 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 get one of the other shows and and. If you have not had the opportunity to to find Daryl, you can find him on DarylScott.com. And you can also go to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and just search Daryl Scott. Some great stuff. I, I really enjoy 
um, the posts that you make, especially some of the you'll you'll get on and, and play some acoustic stuff. Really great opportunity to learn more about Daryl. If you want to go to the show at the Blue Note Grill, just simply go to bluenotegrill.com and you can buy tickets there. Daryl, we're looking forward to the show on June the 6th, and I, I appreciate you visiting with me today. Absolutely. And uh, I look forward to starting that three-week run, and uh, that night in Durham will be the first one. So uh, it would be great to see the North Carolina folks again. Let's go back to 2005 off the Real Time al- uh, album. It's Daryl Scott and Long Time Gone, and you're listening to Hayes' Hard Drive. On the front porch swinging Looking out on a vacant field Used to be filled with burl And a back and now he knows it never will Brothers found work in Indiana Sister's a nurse at the old folks home Mama's still cooking too much for supper and me, I've been a long time gone Yeah, a long time gone Ain't hold a road since I don't know when Long time gone now do you play that old church piano Sitting out on her daddy's farm She always thought we'd be together Lord, I never meant to do her harm She said she could hear me singing in the choir Me, I heard another song I got wind and hit the road running Lord, I've been a long time gone been a long time ago I ain't had a prayer since I don't go in Long time ago And it ain't coming back again Playing down on Broadway, getting out of the hardware, living from a tip jar, sleeping in my car, rocking my guitar. Yeah, I'm gonna be a star. Now, me and dear, you sing every Sunday, watching the garden and the children grow. We listen to the radio to hear what's cooking, but the music ain't got no soul. Now, they sound tired, but they don't sound haggard. They got money, but they don't have. They got Junior, but they don't have Hank. I think, I think, I think the rest is a long time ago. No, I ain't honked the horn since I don't know when. Long time ago, and it ain't coming back again. No, I ain't honked the horn since I don't know when. Long time ago, and it ain't coming back again. Long time, long time 